In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the Mass of the Most Pure and Immaculate Heart of Mary, and this is the first Saturday of June here in North Carolina. And I'd like to uh, speak to you briefly about the great Cardinal Minzenti and uh, how he was really persecuted not only by the enemies of Jesus Christ, but by the friends of Jesus Christ, fellow bishops, and even by the Pope himself, Pope Paul VI. Pope Paul VI betrayed Cardinal Minzenti and betrayed Hungary to the communists and all the clergy to the communist clergy. Here's what uh, Cardinal Minzenti said. My, my dear, my marvelously faithful Hungarians, your warm hearts, your tears, your attachment, your millennium of painful history cut me to the quick. For six years I had not wept. Now I let my tears flow freely. How could I repay the kindness of these villagers and of the land of Hungary? I took the two pictures so precious to me from the wall, the picture of the Holy Father, Pope Pius XII, and of my mother. These good people wept with me. They wept with a cardinal. And why did he weep? Because he saw uh, the betrayal of his country. Hungary was one of those great Austria, part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was um, attacked, the Catholic monarchy was attacked in World War I, and the communists uh, moved in with Soviet Russia in the 1950s. Uh, Cardinal Mazenti explains, Then the Russian tanks came in to crush the rebellious Hungarians and to subjugate the people. They wanted to, always these two signs of, the, of Satan, to secularize the children's education, to poison their minds with evolution and atheism, and then secondly, to eliminate the religious instruction. Secularize the school, and eliminate religious instruction. So, Carlo Mazzenti explains what happened to the priests. And this is very important for us in these days, because it's the exact same pattern we're living through in the, the conciliar of Society St. Pius X. He said, Carlo Mazzenti, the communists also broke the resistance of the pastors, the Catholic priests, by recruiting through coercion and fraud a dissident group of priests whom they could use for their purposes. These were the so-called peace priests, pox priests. I have mentioned the people called them that the people called them that because they chiefly appeared in public at the at the peace meetings. Their role consisted largely in, in undermining the unity and strength of the Catholic Church from within. By following the, the directives of the communists, the baneful effects of this fifth column will be easier to understand, I think, if I sketch briefly and in order the events that took place after signing the Concordat. The Concordat was the, the meeting, the uh, agreement with the communist government between the Catholic Church and the communist government. Carlo Mazzenti continues, The recruiting for the Pax priests that began with great impetus throughout the country had small success at first. Out of 7,500 alleged, allegedly registered priests, a total of 150 actually turned up, and some of these had been brought to the capital by trickery or force. And then there took place what was called the Concordat, the agreement uh, between bishops of the Catholic Church and priests with the communist government. And this, as you know, was a, was a huge betrayal from within. Nevertheless, he said, all these tactics proved to be fairly unsuccessful because the majority of priests obeyed the bishop's ban and held aloof from the peace priests. Faced with this resistance, 
the communists decided they had to break it by force. So there were still many good priests who were fighting against this, but the communists saw they had to use a different tactic, which was infiltration and force. So several b good bishops were replaced. They were removed. Some of them were, four of them were arrested and imprisoned. And Cardinal Mazenti himself was imprisoned for, for 14 years, going through severe tortures. They would serve him platters of food. And he told the Catholic people of Hungary, if you hear me say anything different from what I preached before, know that I have been drugged and don't believe me. And he was very careful to eat only the edges of the food because he knew they were drugging him. And they wanted him to go on radio and on the radio proclaim that the, the new government was good, that the Pax priests were good. And so Carlo Mazenti, he also underwent severe tortures and near starvation for, for 14 years. Here's what he says. On July the 3rd, 1951, the bishops met for a conference under the chairmanship of Archbishop Giula Sapik of Igar. The four bishops placed under house arrest were, of course, missing. Just like we saw, for some strange reason, Bishop Williamson was missing at the General Chapter Council uh, in uh, 2012. Same tactics. Those who would fight were removed. The new vicar general, the peace priests, came in their place. This weighted conference of bishops issued a declaration of unqualified loyalty to the regime in the name of all Hungarian Catholics and pledged itself to support the peace movement in the so-called spirit of agreement. In practice, of course, this meant recognition and approval of the peace priests. Thus, the communists had achieved their goal. They could now proceed to undermine the church discipline and holy religion. The church was being brought to heal. So, by uh, issuing a declaration of compromise, they overthrew and infiltrated the Catholic Church. This is exactly what happened in the Society of St. Pius X. With this declaration of, of 2012 July and the April 15th document, 2012 uh, doctrinal declaration, there was the overthrow from within, the compromise from within of all that Archbishop Lefebvre laid down. So now, now instead of no compromise, no agreement, no canonical recognition until Rome comes back to the Catholic faith, now it is we seek and approve and determine an eventual canonical agreement with modernist Rome, with modernist Rome. And that's the key difference. And it, the, it's not a question of prudence, it's firstly a question of the faith. It's a question of the faith first. But listen to all these, these, these similarities, it's quite striking. Uh, firstly, uh, the, uh, the government started to appoint the superiors. Just like modernist Rome, appoints all these, after Vatican II, appointed all these liberal bishops and priests in charge of colleges and seminaries to infiltrate and to bring in the Vatican II revolution. So they appointed the superiors. And now, since 2012, in the Conciliar SSPX, all the liberal clergy are being brought to high positions. And all those in favor of Bishop Follet's new modernist direction, they're all being elevated to high positions. So, for example, Father Bushcourt saying publicly in South America and Argentina that the Jews did not commit deicide, which completely defies scripture and defies uh, history. He has been elevated to the position of the superior, the district superior in France, which is a very high position, for example. Also, uh, the clergy... The good clergy were silent. The good clergy grew silent. And Cardinal, Mezzi, Cardinal Mazzenti says this was, this was criminal on the part of the good clergy. Again, draw the, right, draw the similarities. Also, the seminaries 
and the theological academies for boys and young men were dissolved. And that's coming. The watering down of Catholic doctrine, the watering down, especially the boys who need to understand the Catholic fight that we're in for the social kingship of Christ. And our men need to be fueled with this, that this is our fight, the social kingship of Jesus Christ that is now on the back burner. And now even the websites, Dici and sspx.org, say the purpose of the SSPX is, is just the priesthood and uh, to preserve the Latin Mass. And you know as well as I, Archbishop Lefebvre, of course he loved the priesthood and, and fought to restore it. Of course he fought to restore the true Catholic Mass. But the top of the list was the divinity of Jesus Christ and that he is king. That's the first fight that Christ be proclaimed as king uh, and, and condemn the Vatican II heresies and attack Christ's kingship. What else is the similarities? Uh, the Pax priests, they all took over. All the compromising clergy took over. So the good priests had to go into hiding, into same mass in disguise throughout Hungary. The Pax priests also chose can candidates for the priesthood and who would be bishops. Again, similarity. Uh, also, good priests were transferred out to the boondocks and, uh, and in places of no influence. And so this has also happened. Uh, where, where Father Peter Scott, for example, he, he should know better than going along with this. He should be publicly opposing it. He was always a a good uh, bulldog for our Lord and barked against the modernists. But he should also not be going along with what Bishop Follet is doing right now. So pray for Father Peter Scott. He's a great priest. And I know many good priests in the society who uh, have been transferred because at first they opposed and now they're, they're out in places of, of little influence. Also, uh, the interesting here, Cardinal Manzenti says, the media, which Pope Pius XI warned us, the media is in the hands of the international Jewry and in the hands of the enemies of Jesus Christ and the Freemasons and, of course, the communists in Hungary. So the media, the newspapers, the radio, the TV, glorified all these, all these betraying bishops and priests, the Pax priests. So you see there's a there's a pattern to the enemy's ways, to their, their steps of betrayal and uh, from within. And we see the similarities that happened at Vatican II in the Catholic Church and in, the, uh, in our priestly society of St. Pius X. Uh, I quote him, No one who does not know the situation well can form an accurate picture of this perverse and humiliate, humiliating situation for the Holy Catholic Church in Hungary. The servility, the wickedness, and irresponsibility of the Pax priests naturally made it all the more debasing. That is, priests who preached many good sermons about virtue and saints, but would not preach against the communist government that was leading souls to hell and crushing the Catholic Church. This was the serious betrayal on the part of the priest. Just like right now, it's a serious betrayal on the part of the priest to remain silent against Bishop Fillet's modernist redirecting of the work of Archbishop Lefebvre. Right into the arms of the conciliar Rome. And uh, people are saying, well, I'm not going to do anything until I see an agreement. All right, the agreement's here. Argentina is the first step. It's already done. It's documented. It's public. They are officially, the SSPX apostolate in Argentina is officially under the bishops, the conciliar modernist bishops. It's very serious, but who cares? Most people don't care. And uh, most traditional Catholics, as long as they got their TV, their internet, and their beer and popcorn, they're fine. And their movies and their video games. And this is why God perhaps is punishing us, punishing our West. Five, the fifth point with Cardinal Monsenti. These infiltrators also serve the interests of communism. 
by their travels abroad and their attendance at congresses. On such occasions, their task was to furnish Christians of the free world with false information about the relations between the church and communism. Usually they took them with them bishops or priests who already had connections abroad, and who then, in the presence of these emissaries, of course, assured their acquaintances that everything in Hungary was normal. And this is the, the websites of the Society of Pius X, all coming out saying, everything is the same, nothing has changed, all is normal. When, in fact, that's not the case. We have, we have the five heavy-hitting documents that show a new doctrine, a new religion, a new direction in the leadership of the Society of Pius X. And notice the similarities. On November the 1st, I was asked to resign my archiepiscopal office by the Pope, Paul VI. Paul VI was a bad Pope. He was a bad Pope. And here's what he says. I sent the Pope a long treatise on the pernicious activities of these peace priests, these compromising priests, on the, on the, on the state of the state, the, the church and state system that had been organized by force, and I noticed all the no negative consequences of the Vatican negotiations which had been going on with the communists for the past 10 years. And then on December 18, 1973, Cardinal Mazzenti wrote a final uh, a, a letter to Pope Paul VI. And in then, in the letter of January 7, 1974, I expressed my profound grief, but I also informed the Pope that neither personal sorrow nor clinging to office were the reason for my being unable to accept the decision. See, the Pope told him, resign. And he said, I cannot resign. Because, and he'll, he'll list his reasons here soon. And he told the Pope, I cannot accept the responsibility for the consequences of this decision because such measures only add to the already difficult predicament of the Hungarian Catholic Church. They are harmful to religious life and sow confusion to the souls of Catholics devoted to the faith and priests devoted to the Catholic Church. I asked the Pope to rescind this, de this decision, but nothing of the sort was done. Instead, on the 25th anniversary of my show trial, on February the 5th, 1974, the announcement of my removal from the See of Estergom in Hungary was announced. On the next day, to my profound sorrow, I found myself forced to issue a correction through my office. And here I'm going to he wrote a letter, a public letter to, to all the Catholic world, why he could not accept resigning at the Pope's request. And I remind you, this was in 1972-73, Archbishop Lefebvre knew all about this, and he was telling all this news to the seminarians. You can hear it on the conferences in Econ. And Archbishop Lefebvre, he, he was very similar to Cardinal Mazzenti, standing up, Cardinal Mazzenti stood up to defend the faith of Hungary, but Archbishop Lefebvre stood up to defend the faith of the whole Catholic world, of the whole Catholic Church, and that's his greatness. So here's the, here's the point from Cardinal Mazzenti. Cardinal Mazzenti has not abdicated his office as Archbishop, nor his dignity as the Primate of Hungary. The decision was taken by the Holy See alone. After long and conscientious consideration, the Cardinal justified his attitude on this question as follows. So here he, he explains in a few points why he could not accept from the Pope the resignation. The first point, he says, Hungary and the Catholic Church of Hungary are not free, but are slaves to communism. Second point, he says the leadership of the Hungarian diocese is in the hands of a church administration built and controlled by the communist regime. 
Just like for just like now, the the state of the whole conciliar church is controlled by modernists in Rome. And so you cannot trust these local bishops. You cannot trust these new priests that say the new mass. You cannot trust traditional groups and traditional priests that compromise in some way or any way with Vatican II or the new mass. So it's very similar, the parallels. The third, the, the next point in his letter, he said that the regime, the regime, the communist regime, decides who is to occupy the ecclesiastical positions, who will be bishop, who will be rectors of seminaries, who will be the priests, and for how long. Furthermore, the, the communist regime also decides what persons the bishops will be allowed to consecrate as, as priests. This is very significant, because remember what happened to St. Peter's. They chose Father Bizig to be superior general of their order, of their congregation of priests. Rome stepped in and said, no, he won't. We want this wet noodle to take his place. So Rome dictated who will be the superior general, even of these traditional groups. That's why we cannot make a canonical agreement with modernist Rome, nor compromise and follow Bishop Fillet in his new direction. Also, uh, um, just ask yourself, Menzingen, Bishop Fillet, condemned Bishop Williamson consecrating Bishop Four for the survival of the Catholic faith and tradition and in the line of Archbishop Lefebvre. So that tells you now, Bishop Fillet will never consecrate a bishop now without Rome's approval. And the candidate will have to be one chosen by modernist Rome. So you can see the society is already in the pocket of the enemies of Christ. And this is very grave. And I'm sure Archbishop Lefebvre is rolling in his grave at this betrayal, and probably even rolling more at the, at the laxity of the priests to oppose such a betrayal from within. And they're all going along with it, and most of the faithful are cheerleading the new direction. It's, it's very serious. And, and uh, the Cardinal ends, he also says, I, I, I'm not going to list all the points, but I'll list the last one here. He says the, the next reason why he could not accept the Pope asking him to resign was the appointment of bishops or apostolic administrators without the elimination of the above-mentioned abuses does not solve the problems of the Hungarian Catholic Church. The installation of the peace priests in important ecclesiastical posts has shaken the confidence of loyal good priests and lay Catholics in the highest administration of the Church. In these grave circumstances, Cardinal Manzenti cannot abdicate. And then he concludes, This is the path I traveled to the end, and this is how I arrived at complete and total exile. So Cardinal Manzenti was exiled from his sheep, from his clergy, from his country. And it broke his heart. And he says two years after he was exiled from Hungary, the Rome did another stab in the back by lifting the excommunication of the Pax priests. Because Carlo Mazzenti leveled an excommunication for any priest who compromised with the communist government. And so after, Rome lifted that excommunication that he laid down. A very serious betrayal to all the Catholic people of Hungary. And very similar circumstances now. This phony... Uh, lifting of the excommunications of, our, of, our, of the four bishops. They never existed in the first place. And the, the phony uh, Sumorum Pontificum, which is a horrible document, and praised by Bishop Follet and many society priests because it, it lists the so-called abrogation of the Tridentine Mass. But it was never abrogated, the Tridentine Mass. And we know better than playing these games. And the Archbishop condemned the idea of playing games with the Catholic faith. So, dear uh, faithful, uh, realize the similarities of how the enemies of Christ work. They work uh, with phony declarations, with compromised language, ambiguous phrases, 
That's how Vatican II got into the Catholic Church and, and hijacked it from the top. And that's how the Society of St. Pius X was also hijacked from the top. You expel the opposition, such as Bishop Williamson, and uh, Bishop Four was there. He was there to see the betrayal from the top through uh, the doctrinal declaration and, and Bishop Fillet overthrowing the foundations laid by Archbishop Lefebvre. But don't start thinking, oh, this is, this is uh, priests fighting priests, bishops fighting priests, bishops. It's not this. The heart of the issue is our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, who is our King, who is the eternal High Priest. He's the heart of the Catholic faith. And Vatican II attacks him, his kingship, his divinity, his holy priesthood. And Bishop Follet has also compromised on that. And that's why we must not go with that. So you, uh, dear uh, faithful, persevere. And on this feast, on this day of the first Saturday of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, uh, try to fulfill the first uh, five Saturdays. And God sees that. But sanctify the Sundays and do the first Saturdays by spiritual communion. God knows. He knows and He sees. And you will get the grace because these, these, good, these good Catholics in Hungary, they stopped going to the Mass of the peace priests. They would not go to their Mass. Same with the Catholics in the French Vendée. They would not go to the Mass, even though it was a Tridentine Latin Mass. They refused to go to the Mass of priests who compromised the faith. And that was the same in Mexico, the same in China, the same in Russia, the same in Ukraine. And we have to hold the same position. You don't compromise, you don't go to the public Mass of those who compromise the Catholic faith.